Hey guys, I'm Sullivan. This is Sullivan. Let's take a closer look. So like I said before, I'm Sullivan. This is Sullivan. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little walk around kind of overview of the way I built up this van. So the Sullivan is a 2008 Freightliner Sprinter 2500. It's a 170 extended. So it's the long wheelbase with the little bit of extra space right here. So I guess we'll start out with the exterior first. First off, uh, this van has about 200,000 miles and the hood on it was actually looking like it was in pretty bad shape. It's not in the best of shape now, but the hood has been spray painted black, so it's a pretty cheap job. Other than that, uh, we have pretty much stock everything. The windows are tinted and the windshield with a ceramic tint to keep some of the heat out. We have our big fancy exhaust tip on the side right here. We do have these little knobs here, which are for a table that's inside right now and you can set it up on the outside for if you're camping out in one little table. Up on top is a front runner's roof rack and uh, the little silver piece on top is actually a third bed, which I'll show you guys a little more later. Also, I have a Max Air air vent up on the roof up in the front. On the back, I have the Prime Designs ladder on the door as well as the van compass, I believe, uh, rear step. The left side used to have another light here. It's been converted into an air vent. And in a previous life, this van had a water tank and a generator and stuff set up. All of these things right here are not doing anything. Also up on the front, we do have our CB antenna. And that pretty much does it for the outside of the Sullivan. The Sullivan on the outside is definitely not the uh, best looking van out there, but I always say that you want to be the sketchiest van in the parking lot. That way the people know who not to mess with. Now onto the inside of the Sullivan. Right here we have the Gretti Infometer Touch, two cell phone mounts for navigation, and the Alpine Halo 9 head unit. If you open up right here, it stays pretty much empty, but we do have six USB ports for charging up there. As you move your way up, we have the CB radio mounted right up here. We also have a fold down 27 inch TV. And then down at the bottom below the radio, we have our airbag controls for individual left and right side airbags. Moving on to the middle of the Sullivan, we have a couch here that folds out into a bed. I believe it's from seats4u.com. It's a custom sized couch that folds out. We also have a little slide out thing. This is a pillow top for the top of the couch and then my sheets and a blanket for sleeping. Underneath the couch is also storage for some leveling blocks in case you want to get the perfect night's sleep and then also a spare bathroom. The couch pretty much is my main bed and even though it's not quite long enough to sleep perfect, I can sleep at a little bit of an angle and it's not a problem. Even though the thing is a little short when you're laying down on it, it's really not a huge problem to sleep two people on it. It was actually done multiple times before the other beds were installed. Something that's not used very often up in the front is these little holes here. That is for a table that will fit right here. The table used to be in the van at all times, but I found that it kind of got in the way more than it was useful. So I took it out and never really thought about putting it back in. I still have the table and it's not hard at all to put back in. So if I ever wanted to, I can just pop it back in and I have the table back. The Sullivan started out as a pure cargo van and uh, there was no window in the side right here, only the rear window in the door. So we actually ended up putting in this window ourselves. This is just a little magnetic uh, kind of insulated window cover. I really keep them on the back windows pretty much all the time because it's mainly me by myself in the van and I don't really need the, the back windows. Also, right next to the window, we have our remote control for the roof air. Pretty handy in the summertime. Had to put a little piece of tape over the light because it doesn't really turn off at night. 
Up above the driver and passenger seat, we have the RB Components headliner shelf or whatever it's called. This is where I keep some spare blankets. Also have some window covers for the front windows. Same brand as the ones that are on the side windows. And they are magnetic, so you just pop them up in about five seconds and they work great. If we come down here below the driver's side seat, we have another four port USB charger and then a switch for the interior lights which are LEDs right here. A little bit overpowered. We also have a switch right here to turn on the TV and radio uh, so you can use it if the van is off. Behind the passenger seat, if we look up underneath, you can see that's where I have my house battery at. It's an Optima blue top and also a, I believe it's a 2000 watt inverter up in front of the battery. That inverter powers this outlet, another outlet in the back of the van. This right here is the controller for the inverter. Pretty sweet to have it remote mounted like that. These two USB ports are also powered off of the inverter. And then this switch just tells you your battery voltage for your main battery and the auxiliary battery. This last switch over here is the most recent addition to the Sullivan. It turns on the air compressor that's mounted down beneath it. I also have these little brackets right here, which are what supports the third bed. Uh, that way, if the case it's really cold out and you need to run the heater to keep everyone warm, you can put two people up front in a smaller area, or if you need to just sleep three people in their individual beds. Best feature of the interior of the van is this Wabasto diesel heater. So the heater itself is actually mounted right behind the couch. You can kind of see it down there. And you just dial in whatever temperature you want and it kicks on and off throughout the night and keeps it at whatever temperature you want. So the last feature on the interior of the Sullivan would be these little hooks right here. This is actually where the third bed would sit. There's another adapter that sits onto these and then the bed sits on that. Uh, that way, if the case it's really cold out and you need to run the heater to keep everyone warm, you can put two people up front in a smaller area or if you need to just sleep three people in their individual beds. So now we are in what I like to call the garage part of the Sullivan. It's nice to keep all of the kind of wet and stinky stuff separated from the front part of the van. And uh, we definitely have a whole lot of room in the back of the Sullivan. Starting in the front, up here at the top, we have a little shelf. This is what holds the third mattress and pillow and the sheets for it. Just keeps it up and out of the way until we actually need it. We also have this E-Track to mount these holders for the bicycle. Pretty much all the way around so you can configure them in whatever way that you want. This right here is a table that folds up and you can use it to set your gear bag down on or honestly whatever you want really. It comes in handy a lot when it's rainy. You can set up all your stuff up here on the table and keep everything off the floor. This is another legacy piece of equipment from Sullivan's previous life. This is actually a strap to hold an easy up. All this equipment down here is standard stuff that stays in the van at all times. Backup air pump, shock pump for bicycles. Never know when you're going to come along an avalanche and you need a good ice pick. And then also a skateboard in case you want to get somewhere without the van. On the driver's side in the back of the van, we have this fold down second bed. I kind of call this the second bed because if there's just one other person staying with me in the van, they'll tend to take this bed just because it's so easy to pick up and put down. The third bed is a little bit more of a chore to take off the roof and set it up inside the front. So the second bed is usually the go-to choice for uh, if anyone's joining me on a weekend. Second bed also has a couple amenities like their very own nightlight, USB charger, and a 12 volt outlet. They also have their own bathroom here and an air vent to let in some fresh air. When the second bed is down and this door is closed, you actually have a little shelf here to put your cell phone or knickknacks on. So the Sullivan used to have a big air conditioning unit on the roof and that was powered off of the original generator that was in the van. When I removed the generator to put in the couch, I could still run the AC if I would plug it into any sort of outlet. And this is where I kept the cord to run the AC. 
Uh, I don't use it much anymore, but it still sits there because it doesn't really take up much room. Also on this rear door, we have an enlarged toolbox. Just keeps all my bicycle, motorcycle tools, and some other knickknacks. You might also have noticed that the back of the van does have windows, but both of the windows have been covered up. This one by plywood, this one has just been painted over. So if anyone was to try and look inside the back, you can't see anything. But if I do use this cord to plug in the Sullivan, it will still power some things. Uh, there's a couple outlets on the exterior and the interior of the van that will run off of the AC power. There's also a battery charger permanently plugged in, so as soon as I would plug in the van, it'll start charging the battery. Like I said, it doesn't really get used too much anymore. We do have more LED lights in the back of the van here. Again, kind of overkill, but it's nice to be able to light it up when you need to. This outlet here is powered off of the inverter from the front of the van, just in case you need some power in the back, you have it available. We also have a couple switches in this little controller here. This switch will turn on this controller, and this is actually the water heater for the shower. The shower itself is just an outdoor shower. There's a shower head right here. And when you flip this switch here, you have a nice outdoor shower. The water tank for the shower is actually right here on the floor. Just take off this little cover, which is just a piece of metal, and then you can unscrew this tank here, fill it up with water. These three plates here are for tying down motorcycles. What you do is slide in one of these pieces on either side and then pull up the pin and you can thread it through the foot peg of the dirt bike. And it ties it down very good and uh, it only takes maybe a minute or so to tie down each bike. I guess I'll show you guys the underside of the van also. This is the water tank for my shower. It's actually just a weed sprayer container for the back of a four-wheeler. Right up here is the water pump for the water heater. This is the exhaust for the cabin heater. And right in front of all of that is a aftermarket 47 gallon fuel tank. The stock tank's about 23 gallons. So with this 47, I can go a whole lot farther. One final thing to show you guys is my actual heater core that I use to heat up the water. So the engine coolant will come in here and go out here and then the water for the shower goes right below it in these red lines. When the engine is up to temperature, it can heat up that 15 gallon tank in, I don't know, three or four minutes. Then the engine is still cool, obviously. It probably takes about 10 minutes and you'll have a nice hot shower. That's pretty much it for the overview of the Sullivan. As you probably noticed, there's no real kitchen or an actual bathroom on the Sullivan. And the only shower is really just a, an outdoor shower, kind of. Most of my trips are over the weekend. Occasionally I'll do kind of a long weekend trip. So I don't really find it necessary to actually live on this thing full time. There's also no room to store clothes for extended periods of time. With all the trips I've done in the van, there's not a whole lot that I think I would change about it. I do like having the, the big garage in the back. It's nice to be able to keep the gas and dirt bikes and stuff back there separated from the inside. You can leave things banging around in the back and just close the window and all the noise stays in the back also. The only thing I might have changed had I had this van from the beginning of its life is maybe put this wall a little further back just to give a little bit more room up in the front half of the van. It gets a little cramped sometimes, especially when there's two people up in the front with that third bed. Overall though, the Sullivan works pretty much perfect for my mission, which is short weekend trips. There are some things that I don't really use all that much anymore, like the TV for instance, mainly because I'd rather spend my time outside of the van when I'm on a trip. I hope you guys like this little overview of the Sullivan, and if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you're interested in seeing any of the adventures that I take the Sullivan on, go ahead and check out the weekend vlog link at the end of the video. And with that said, that pretty much wraps up the video, and uh, we'll see you next time on Sullivan's Reviews, or whatever I'm going to call this thing.